Hey everybody, it's Glenn. I'm back today showcasing part two of my wrestling action figure collection. Following on from my WWE Classic Superstars, today I'm presenting my WWE Divas. The WWE uses the term Diva to reference its women wrestlers, but where most of these implants on legs are concerned, I use the term wrestler very loosely and where one or two of them are concerned, I'm even using the term woman loosely. I'm going to begin with my earliest diva. It's Jackie here from 1998. Goes back to a time when the World Wrestling Entertainment was still calling themselves the World Wrestling Federation before the other WWF, the World Wildlife Fund, filed suit and made the WWF change their name to the WWE saving any of us from confusing wrestling with panda conservation. Um, of course, we all did until then, and by us all, I mean nobody. So this figure is truly appalling. Um, I never in a million years would have bought an action figure this terrible. Um, it was a birthday present from a friend, so... Um, I've hung on to it through the years because of that and solely because of that. Um, if you take a closer look, the face on this, I mean, could could this figure be any uglier? Hopefully my um, camera is focusing, or for your sake, hopefully it's not focusing on how ugly she is. She's boss-eyed, and um, to show you how little she looks like Jackie, they've provided us with a picture here. Um, and the anatomy is just awful. I mean, they've inflated the tits and arse to a point where um, she looks like some kind of atomic monster. Um, I'm not sure with hips like this, this woman would be capable of walking, let alone wrestling. Um, anyway, that's Jackie. And when I said I use the term woman loosely, I was, of course, referring to everybody's favorite preoperative transsexual china um china's one of my favorite women wrestlers when i say she was a um preoperative transsexual i am of course kidding she um was an outrageously muscular woman to the point that she looked like one of the male wrestlers in a cheap black wig um she started out as Triple H's valet, I guess we'll call her, and um, over time physically injected herself into all of his matches, much to the um, disgruntlement of his opponents and the fans. Um, over time, the WWE made serious efforts to try and feminize um, China. It included um, providing her with a couple of implants, which I believe China has actually trademarked those implants. You girls out there, you can officially go and buy China's tits. Um, boys out there, you can go and buy your girlfriend's China's tits. Um, I think the model is called China. Ask your plastic surgeon, I'm sure he has all the details for you. Um, so they tried to feminize her with the implants, they also gave her um, jaw reconstruction and I'm sure a ton of other procedures and surgeries were also performed to um, vaguely make China appear to be a woman. The um, WWE's project of feminizing China concluded with her appearing in the pages of Playboy. Um, and that Playboy is, I will say, is one of two issues of Playboy I ever bought, the other being um, Jerry Halliwell. Um, yes, Ginger Spice from the Spice Girls. Um, she didn't actually do a centerfold for Playboy. It was um, pictures that Playboy had bought up from various photographers of Jerry Halliwell, Ginger Spice, before she was Ginger Spice. Um, before she was a pop star, she made her money by flashing her knockers in various CD publications. Um, and I, of course, bought that issue of Playboy because she's wearing the infamous British flag dress on the cover and I felt I was being patriotic, of course. 
Anyway, I digress, China. Um, so the action figure here of China dates towards the end of the um, China's stint in the WWF, WWE. This is by no means the best China action figure. I reserve that status, in my opinion, to this figure here. Um, this figure came in a two-pack with Chris Jericho. Stand China, please. She's in heels. She finds it tricky to stand. Um, and I think this figure kind of combines the best, the masculine and feminine elements of China. Um, and it's kind of, she's in one of her more signature kind of bondage-esque costume. Lots of leather and studs as she tended to wear. I don't know if I can bring her closer to the camera. There is actually quite a decent likeness of China there in the face. We're moving on to the time when um, Jack's Pacific started using real scan technology. Over the time that the um, Jack's Pacific held the WWF, WWE action figure license, it's probably one of the most improved lines ever in toy history. They started looking like shit, and um, by the time Jack's completed its run on WWE action figures, the um, figures themselves almost look like the uh, wrestlers they were trying to be, in most cases. Um, China here being one of those instances. Love this figure. Love China. She is um, a freak show. She popped up in TNA recently. Um, wrestling misses her. She um, unfortunately isn't around these days in the ring very much and um, filmed a um, sex tape called One Night in China. Get it? One Night in China um, and other than that she um, disappeared into oblivion probably to a um, lifestyle of crack. Next up I have Trish Stratus here, proud Canadian diva um, and Trish probably became the prototype for um, divas as we know them today, blonde hair, big boobs. Um, I despised Trish when she was first introduced. Um, she was a wonder to behold in that she was so wooden. Um, wooden to the point that Hacksaw Jim Duggan could have left his 2x4 in the locker room and carried Trish Stratus down to ring in place of it. That's how wooden she was. Um, but saying that, during her run in wrestling, Trish became one of the most improved performers. Um, she still stunk up the microphone, um, but in the ring she actually um, developed into a decent wrestler, um, developing a number of moves which were all um, crappy puns on her name, um, her finishing move, Stratus Faction. Um, she did a move called the Maytrish, a matrix style move um, and other moves which I'm sure I'm forgetting from her skill set she had them that's from um, this figure here is from the ruthless aggression line which most of my divas in the background are from it's Jack's kind of basic wrestling figure line um, that's Trish I actually have twin magic when it comes to Trish here. Here she is. It's the same head sculpt in a how she appeared in um, SummerSlam. I forget what this year is. I'm going to guess 2002 maybe. Here she is in her Team Diva costume. Not only do I have two Trish Stratuses, I have a third one here. Trish in her... Um, refereeing gear. This Trish came in the Adrenaline 2-pack with a Shawn Michaels also in um, referee get-up and all these Trish um, figures here share the same 
head mold and body just different decoration um, that's Trish there to the power of three before I get into the beef of the um, ruthless aggression diva figures I'll just show you my um, aerial figure here this figure is from when EC W was relaunched by the WWE on um, the Sci-Fi Channel, and I became quite fond of Ariel here. Um, sure, she had um, the obligatory big tits for a diva, um, but she had a vampire gimmick, which um, she camped up like nobody's business. Um, and it was just refreshing to um, kind of see a diva be a bit different, have a bit of a different character and personality, you know, be more gothic, and um, she um, had big tits and big fangs to match. That's Ariel. Her time in the WWE CW was brief, but um, I remember it fondly. Moving on to the Ruthless Aggression series, Divas, here's Kelly Kelly. Her uh, earlier Kelly Kelly figure was issued alongside Ariel in the ECW sub-series of figures. Um, that figure looked shit. Um, I didn't pick it up. The um, face was just dog ugly. Um, this is a second Kelly Kelly figure from Ruthless Aggression, Series 31. Um, as you can see from the picture on... The card here, Kelly Kelly is an amazingly good looking woman. She actually ranked in um, Maxim Magazine's recent Hot 100 Women poll, um, which the um, of late, over the last few weeks, the WWE have not let us forget about, mentioning it about every five minutes. Anyway, she ranked, she is a legitimately good looking woman. Um, you wouldn't really guess that from her action figure, but... Um, like I said, this is one is slightly better than the earlier issue, Kelly Kelly. If you kind of squint, she vaguely looks like Kelly Kelly. Next up here is Gillian. Um, Gillian originally was introduced with a gimmick of having a big growth on her face, some kind of weird big mole, um, which eventually was eaten by the um, boogeyman. And after that, she developed a gimmick of being a terrible singer, um, but believing she was amazing, which um, was actually a decent gimmick and um, put a smile on my face a couple of times as she um, strutted to... Um, the Ring singing various Britney Spears songs, um, almost as bad as Britney Spears sung them. Then there's um, Malina, sexy Malina. Um, not much to say about Malina, really. Um, she, um, her biggest gimmick is when she enters the ring on the ring apron she um, jumps in the air and does a splits um, I forget which pay-per-view it is one of the pay-per-views she jumps in the air does a splits instead of landing on the um, ring apron she falls off to the ring floor um, it's worth googling if you can find that clip it's quite amusing um, Candice Michelle here Again, a pretty awful um, likeness to the face. Candice Michelle, one of probably the least interesting divas ever. She's probably better remembered as being the um, go-go daddy girl. Oh, moving on to the stuff of magic. Mickey James. Hey, Mickey, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. Um, Mickey's one of those rare divas. She's actually an amazing in-ring performer. Um, kind of most WWE divas are hired firstly for having kind of big tits and blonde hair first and hired for their wrestling talent second. Mickey James actually is a decent wrestler. She currently resides in total non-stop action wrestling. Um, 
And Mickey centers around one of my favorite all time storylines. She was introduced as Trish Stratus's number one fan um, and soon basically became her lesbian stalker. Um, her various exploits as um, Trish's lesbian stalker included kidnapping Trish Stratus's boyfriend at one point. Um, and it also involved kidnapping Trish herself at one point, tying her up in bondage and um, swapping spit with her. Um, good times. We'll never get those good days back, I'm afraid. There will never be a diva storyline as good as um, Mickey James's lesbian love for Trish Stratus. Um, I'll just leave Mickey in frame there. That's the first Mickey James figure, which was quickly followed by this Mickey James figure. I think somehow Jack's realised with this figure um, what a terrible job they did with it and quickly pumped out this second um, Mickey James figure. So I'm actually quite fond of both of them. Um, this is, of course, Mickey looking pretty pissed off. This is Mickey looking... What would you call that expression? Um, jolly or passing gas? I'm not too sure. Those are my two Mickey James figures. Love them. And then another fig, another um, wrestler currently residing in Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, Victoria are here, or Terra, as she's known in. Um, TNA. Um, Victoria, like Mickey James, was a decent um, wrestler um, and like most um, of the divas who can wrestle, unfortunately the WWE gives them a lot less spotlight. That's Victoria. Um, leave her back there. Moving on to the Glamazon, Beth Phoenix. Um, Beth Phoenix here, she's kind of a China light um, she's the strongest of the current um, divas, yet um, she doesn't really hold a candle to China in terms of being an Amazon, and she doesn't hold a candle to Kelly Kelly in terms of being glamorous, but um, yet somehow she uses the name Glamazon loosely. Beth Phoenix. And then last, and probably, well, no, not least, I guess she's kind of mid-ranking in terms of the divas. Here's Maurice, French Canada's contribution to WWE Divadom. Um, I actually pre-ordered this figure from ForbiddenPlanet.com. Um, I love divas, but part of why I collected divas is because the diva was always the short packed figure in the series, which made kind of hunting them down at Toys R Us and various other retailers fun. Kind of when you could find one on the shelf, you um, got a bit of a frill because usually they had been sculpted to high, scalped to high heavens on eBay. Um, so if you could beat a scalper to picking up a diva, I um, patted myself on the back. Um, but when I didn't fancy hunting them, I tended to pre-order them. And Maurice here, her figure, um, the um, promotional image looked way better than um, this figure we got in the package. I think if I hadn't pre-ordered them, if I'd have seen her on the shelf and seen the figure, I probably wouldn't have bought her. She's um, not the prettiest face figure there. Again, if you look at her picture here, she is quite the um, lovely looker. Anyway, that completes my look at um, WWE Divas here. Um, if you've stuck around, thanks for doing so. Please um, comment, rate, subscribe. If you have any opinion on any of the opinions I've expressed, please express it yourself in the comments below. Latest people. Bye.